continuing to make more plans for spring. Uh, as I'm recording this, it's minus 21 outside and a big snowstorm predicted again for tomorrow. So a little optimistic maybe on my plans. What I plan to do is add quail, bobwhite quail, uh, to my menagerie in the spring. And I just bought online, downloaded the set of plans for this particular coop. I think that's what I will build, or at least I'll use the plans as a baseline to get started with. Uh, quail, you can't really allow them to free range. Uh, they free range right out of your yard and don't come back. They're that close to, to being wild. So I like this. It has a uh, coop area in the upper left there, and then a, a large caged area for them so that they can get out and get exercise and get down on the ground and all that good stuff. Well, this is a male of the bobwhite quail. I had quail in the past, but I've never had the bobwhites. What I had was coternix, uh, the Japanese quail, which are incredible little egg-laying machines. Uh, getting these, of course, just more pets. I don't eat meat, so the quail don't have to worry about ending up in a fancy dish in the oven or anything. But I have found a breeder in Fredericton, New Brunswick, about a three-hour drive from here, and I'm there frequently anyway, and she will sell me hatching eggs. Uh, and I have, of course, I have my uh, incubator that I bought last year, so plans are to uh, pick up the eggs in early April. I'm sure we'll still have snow on the ground then, but it takes three weeks for them to incubate and hatch, and then they will be four to five weeks in a brooder, so hopefully after all that I'll have the, the coop ready for them. And this is a female. Um, they are mature very, very quickly. Uh, not quite as quickly as the coternix, but uh, Bob White will supposedly start laying eggs at three months of age, so plans are, I guess, to, I will use the eggs, but I would also like to maybe try incubating more of their offspring and uh, selling them if there's interest around here and anybody else wanting to have quail. They make great little pets for, for children as long as you have a, a secure coop for them because they're also considered a delicacy by most of the predators around here. And as you saw in my last video, or one of my last videos there, I now have a coyote who likes to visit, so I'm going to make sure everything is very secure for them. Bob White lay a very small white egg. It's described as being about a fifth of the size of a chicken's egg, and I presume they mean a fifth of the size of a medium-sized egg. The chicks are very tiny. I would say this one is probably a couple of weeks old because it's already growing feathers. They're born with just a little uh, brown and yellow fluff. Well, as I said earlier, it was minus 21 this morning and uh, a lot of wind. Most of the wind seems to have dropped and the temperature is warmer. I decided it would be a great day though to come up to the cabin and have my lunch. Nothing fancy, just a can of soup and some crackers and hope to have some tea later and an orange for dessert. Yeah. I uh, have this indoor, outdoor thermometer, remote thermometer thing. I'll turn it around and be able to read it or not. Yeah, I think you can. The minus two that it's showing on there is out in the hoop house. And that sensor is inside of the cold frame that I built that has the uh, um, Claytonia and Mesh growing in it. And if I hit the minimum maximum button here, I think I can do it for my orange on the floor. Yeah, it went down to minus four, it says, in the last 24 hours. And it says zero for in here in the cabin. The interior sensor here in the cabin only goes to zero. But the minus four is what interests me. If that thing is recording accurately, then all of the snow that's on the roof of the cabin and banked around the sides of it 
is really keeping it much warmer in there than I thought it would. Because as I said, it went to minus 21 outside last night. If it only got down to minus 4 in the cabin, that's in the cabin, in the hoopos, that's quite amazing. Uh, so much snow still in front of it and whatever. I can't go in to check on anything. I would like to get in there because I'd like to prune the grapevines, but not going to happen until we have a warm spell, if that ever does occur, I guess. I'll give you a look at outside here in a moment. I guess the last time there was a lot of snow here too, but we've had one or two snowstorms since I've been out here. So I'll have my lunch and then I'll show you around a little bit here. Well, I think a few minutes ago when I was showing you this thermometer, uh, the actual room temperature was reading 15 degrees. I finished my soup and it's now up to 19 degrees, but that isn't accurate. I mean, eventually it'll get to an accurate level, but this certainly is not an instant read thermometer. I'm always very comfortable and warm in here when this thing is still telling me it's down to 12 degrees or so. It uh, takes it quite a while to reach the actual room temperature. And I don't know if you can see the little arrow off to the right of the 19 there, but it is uh, sort of an arrow pointing upward. That means that the temperature is still rising. I have the usual problem. I stoke the stove solid full to get the room warm and then I get it too warm. Well, it's at the point where it is right now. So I, I let the fire die down a bit and then add more bio bricks later. I just want to speak for a minute about the uh, solar kit behind me. I've had a couple of people comment about when will I be doing it and do I realize that it comes with a frame inside that I could set it up on the ground now. I do realize that, but that just is not possible here. Um, I'm on an island uh, with a lot of open water around. I can't see the water from my house, but that doesn't stop the wind. Uh, we get terrific amounts of wind year-round, but in the wintertime it's worse. Like with the wind that we had here yesterday, uh, which was blustering dry snow everywhere. If I had that just sitting on the ground in that frame, it would be long gone now, smashed up in the trees somewhere. So my plans are to build a frame, just out of two by fours or whatever, at sort of ground level. I mean, it would be up three or four feet or more up off of the ground, but that way I'll be able to clean snow off of it better in the winter time. So can't do that until I can get a shovel into the earth here so I can plant the, the posts solidly in the ground and <laughs> looks at things outside here. That's going to be a few months yet. I ordered uh, LED 12 volt lights, light bulbs. The, the kit comes with uh, two 12 volt uh, light fixtures on long extensions. And, but the lights that they provided uh, look like they're LED to me, and I'm not sure how much light they actually give. So what I've ordered, and it looked like they're, excuse me, CFL, not LED. And I don't care for CFL light now that I've discovered LED. Uh, CFL, I don't, know, I don't care for the quality of the light. It's a different sort of a, it turns everything a different color than after dark and all that good stuff. But also, I'm just not sure how much brightness the ones that are with it. These are 5 watt, 12 volt. Uh, I can see it on there. It does say 12 volt. I was just going to tell you something else. And I'll, I'll tell you in a second what I was going to say. Um, and uh, a 5 watt LED is almost equivalent to a 60 watt um, regular incandescent light bulb. I ordered these on Amazon, I guess, and it's like a lot of stuff that you order on Amazon. I don't mind things being made in China. I bought a lot of things that are made in China, but now a lot of things are shipped from China. This took over six weeks to get here. Not that I'm in any rush for it, so I guess that didn't really matter. But when I'm talking about the 12 volt thing there, um, on the end of the package, it shows where they should have it. Um, ticked off what is in the package, 220 volt or 12 volt, and the quality of the, the temperature of the light, the color of the light, whatever. And none of that was ticked off, but over it was one of these QRL barcodes. And I presume when they scan that, it tells them what's in the package. They no longer bother ticking off on the side of the box, that sort of thing. So. 
And anyway, I just noticed written on the bulb, it does say they're 12 volt, and that's what I wanted. So that does it for my little chat on my solar at the present time. I'll give you a little look around at what things look like outside here. Here we go bouncing around. I don't suppose that looks terribly different from the last time I was out here. You can only bury stuff in snow once, I guess. But this is basically just the top, what would that be? Well, from the peak down to the snow, wouldn't be much over a meter of the uh, hoop house is sticking out and it's well banked on the sides and snow over the roof. So perhaps that temperature that I talked about a few minutes ago is, is accurate. So I won't know until I'm able to get inside there. That's my trail coming out. Once again, I had to come out on my snowshoes, and as usual, I do the minimum amount of shoveling. That's the little place where I shoveled so I can get the door open and step down off my snowshoes. I'll give you a look out the uh, windows here. That's my little bird feeder, and so far there hasn't been any birds at it since I've been out here. I don't know what happens out here. Um, if they get attacked by a hawk or something and they don't come back, for several days there it was being cleaned out every day and now I only have to put seed in it every other day again. So I'm not out here enough to see what's happening, I guess. More bouncy video. And that is the Asian pear tree and what I did for covering it. I uh, put a spun bonded row cover over it with a big elastic band to hold it on and it seems to be working. No. No damage, no, nothing, no critter has tried to remove it. And once again, I don't see rabbit tracks on this side of the cabin. The only tracks I see is my squirrel that lives under the cabin, comes out every once in a while to get more bird seed. Well, that will finish, I guess, what I'm going to film out here. I'm going to spend the afternoon reading and whatever, but when I get back up to the house, I'll show you some of the things that's going on in the, in the grow room. Well, this is 24 hours after the previous clip there. I'm trying to finish this video up and I'm back up in the grow room, but I had to show you what our weather is like. <laughs> Guess what? It's snowing again. again. It's quite mild out. Well, I say mild. It's minus two or three degrees, something like that, which is mild for what we've been going through. So it's that kind of snow that is adhering to everything does make a pretty photograph once the storm's over, if the storms ever end here. Hopefully that's in focus. I'm using my Canon Viaxia camcorder, which is a fine camera. Um, but I can't zoom with the GoPro, so I decided to do this clip with the Canon, and I think it's got that in focus. What I'm trying to show you is this. And I'll zoom back so you can see more of them in a second or two here. These are the uh, Japanese maple um, blood good. It's a variety clippings that I took probably a month or so ago. And uh, for the longest time, it just looked like the buds were nice and red and were going to open. I still don't have any leaves, but if you can see by that and some of the other ones there, leaves are starting to unfurl. Move back a little bit more here and see some more of them, maybe. It uh, doesn't mean that there's roots there, but at least there's leaves. And if this is picking up, this is the magnolia here, which has two of the cuttings here have quite good sized leaves on them. The third cutting still doesn't have a leaf, but uh, anyway. Two out of three isn't bad, I guess, and time will tell whether or not they're actually growing roots. Well, as I've been doing at the end of my videos lately, I'm going to highlight a couple of the things that I'm growing this year. Uh, these were introduced to me by Harold, the, wood, the old woodworker channel. Harold grew them last year, and I got very interested in them. They're called sunberries. Uh, they're a substitute or used the same as blueberries are used in fresh fruit or in pies or whatever. They're a annual plant, not a shrub, though, and it's very tiny seeds. I tend to uh, plant anything that has very small seeds early because it usually takes quite a while to get a few plants. And mine are up now, probably more than I'll have any use for, but uh, I have several of them that are up and starting to grow. The second thing that I will highlight here is cutting leaf celery. 
I believe in Europe, it is called Green Celery Soup. Uh, Rob, the old gardener guy channel in Finland, gave me some seeds last year and I grew them. I liked it so well that I really wasn't using much of my flat leaf parsley. I was substituting this for everything that I would use Italian flat leaf parsley in. So this year I'm only growing this, not going to bother growing parsley. Uh, the seeds again are very small. And I sowed those about a week or so, and I see where they're just starting to poke up through the soil. Probably more seedlings than I want for what looks like it's coming up there. But anyway, I uh, well, grow three or four of them. That's really all I need. And as I have been doing with these little highlighted things at the end of my videos, I will give some of these seeds away. I'll give uh, five lots of each of these two varieties, the sunberry and the cutting leaf celery. Um, as I said, the seeds are very small, so probably four or five seeds in an envelope, but germination has been quite good on both of them, so four or five should be as much as you will need. Uh, just send me a personal message with your mailing address, and in the message, please say which of the two varieties that you would like. And I'll put those in the post to you. Once again, anywhere on the globe. Well, thank you very much for watching. I think that concludes this little video.